Hi constant readers, my name is Emily. Welcome back to the Dark Tower series. Today I'm going to be talking more spoiler free, so if you're coming to this from outside the channel, no spoilers, because what I'm doing today is just generally talking about the series and also it has been requested that I attempt to rank these books. So if you're coming from outside of the series and you have heard a lot about The Dark Tower and you are wondering whether or not it is worth it, yes. The answer is yes. It was a series that I tried to get into with The Gunslinger and I really struggled with that when I was younger. It was only because of this project that I actually pushed through the reread. I know some people really love The Gunslinger. I found it really slow and really hard to get into, but it is important to develop the foundation for the series by reading the first book obviously. I also think that by the time you get to the end of the series, you will realize how clever the whole thing is and you will uh, have a better appreciation for the first book. Like having completed the series, I appreciate the first book a lot more than when you start with it as a starting place. What I did to start this reading project back in 2017, you can see the first episode for that, I will link the playlist above and below as well, it was recommended that I start with the short story The Little Sisters of Illyria, which is in the collection Everything's Eventual. When I was putting together the books for this video and just sort of refreshing what happens in each book, I looked at the Wikipedia outline for the series and they actually considered, whoever put that article together, considers Everything's Eventual as a 0 0.5, like a pre-gunslinger. It was actually really great that I started here because I had hopes for the character that Roland would become by reading this. So I didn't like Roland initially in The Gunslinger, but having got this taste of The Little Sisters of Illyria, it put me in a better frame of mind for pushing through The Gunslinger and really getting into this series. I would recommend that you try out the short story first and then move into The Gunslinger. So the Dark Tower series as a whole is, in my opinion, an American fantasy series. Season 2B will actually be my analysis of the series and I will talk about the series as an American fantasy series in the future. Look forward to that. In my opinion, this is very much an American take on fantasy literature. Like, we see a lot of elements of American literature throughout this, but also it's playing heavy with fantasy tropes and fairy tales tie into that. So if you are looking for a series that is fantasy, fairy tales, and very meta, like very aware of literature, literary history, and the connectivity of all stories, then this is for you. If you really don't care about that and you like guns and battle and fantasy and and character development, like all of those elements of a standard Stephen King, this is probably also for you because it's very much in Stephen King's regular writing style. I just think it's a lot richer than a lot of his other works. Basic plot synopsis, Roland of Gilead is the last gunslinger, which is a sort of western cowboy take on knights. The world around him is coming to an end. It's slowly falling apart. Everything is slowing down, things don't function the way they're supposed to, time doesn't run the way it's supposed to, technology is breaking down, magic has disappeared from the world. Like, it's very much a world at its end. And Roland is going on a quest for the Dark Tower. And along the way, he pulls in some fellow adventurers, he builds himself a fellowship, or in the language of these books, a catet. The five of them make this journey to the Dark Tower, really experiencing the world and seeing how things fall apart. The action in it is not that great. I will say that, like, for a fantasy series, the action is not so much of interest. It's the character development, it's the time they spend together um, learning to be gunslingers, going on this journey to the Dark Tower that really makes the story for me. Even though I didn't like the gunslinger, the whole thing is my favorite thing that Stephen King has produced. I have read 
many of his other works, not the entirety of his body of works, not yet anyway, but this I can like safely say at this moment is my favorite. It is something that I definitely want to reread and can see myself returning to many times throughout the rest of my life. I would highly recommend that you pick this up. In terms of ranking the books, so there are eight books in the series and so I would rank them as follows. Coming in last, the Gunslinger. This I found really slow. I found this really hard to get through and it was a hindrance to me um, engaging in the awesomeness that is the rest of the series. This comes in at number eight for me. Number seven, I have book two, The Drawing of Three. So this was a significant step up for me. I really enjoyed seeing all of the characters come together and seeing Roland as more complex. This is such a step up from The Gunslinger. It's not my favorite because it's still like early development, but it is a step up. So number seven. Coming in at number six, we have number three in the series, The Wasteland. So I, again, enjoyed seeing seeing the world flesh out, but I still wasn't super attached to the characters. Like, I enjoyed that book two introduced more characters and fleshed out Roland. I, incre like, my increased enjoyment um, happens in book three because we get an increased knowledge of the characters and the world. So this book is about drawing in the third member of the party. I may have misspoke. He only draws two members of his party in here. He draws the third member in in this book. And I think I really enjoyed the fleshing out of that party, just the like increasing of the story, the increasing of the cast of characters. Coming in at number five is book five, The Wolves of the Kala. So this one was a lot more uh, action-packed. I did like what was introduced in terms of the interconnectedness of the various where's and when's. I think out of the whole series this is maybe the most like traditional in terms of a fantasy novel plot, like a little contained episode within the larger narrative. So coming in at number four I have book four which is Wizard in Glass. This is kind of a weird book. It's a very disjointed book. The Wastelands ends on a cliffhanger. This opens immediately on that cliffhanger, concludes it. We get a break in the middle where we jump into Roland's past and then we have a switching to like a larger narrative, like moving the actual Dark Tower narrative forward at the end. It's very disjointed, but I loved the glimpse into Roland's past and that's why this is much higher than some of the other ones just because for me Roland was a really hard character to connect with. I didn't super enjoy him through the majority of the first three books and so finally getting his backstory, seeing him fleshed out a little bit more, uh, definitely made me more connected to the story, care about him a little bit more. So that is why this is higher on the list than some of the others. So coming in at number three, we have The Dark Tower. So this is book seven in the Dark Tower series. It is the conclusion to the series and it is in third place because I think it contains within it all of the wonderful loveliness of like everything that this series is building up to in terms of playing with fantasy, playing with fiction, metafiction, character development, pulling in all of the where's and when's, just great in terms of what you can do with it, in terms of literary criticism or academic scholarship, like this is great. I would love to have the opportunity to study this at some point in the future. My battery is dying. Let's go quickly. Coming in at number two is Song of Susanna, which is book six in the Dark Tower series. Now, this is my number two because I love Susanna and any time we have to spend with her, thinking about women, thinking about gunslingers, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people don't like this book, but I also think it's very clever in terms of the structuring of it. I love that it was structured um, as, like it's called The Song of Susanna, but it's also structured in terms of a poem or a song. There are stanzas. It's very clever. It's very aware of its own fictionality. Favorite character, interesting structure. I love what's going on. I think this is really clever and I know a lot of people don't like it, 
but it is one of my favorites. The last book I have here and my favorite coming in at number one is The Wind Through the Keyhole. Oh my god, all the books are falling. Ah! Um, my favorite out of everything is actually the Afterthought book, the 4.5 published in 2012, many years after the series proper concluded, The Wind Through the Keyhole. It is a story within a story within a story. It looks at layers, it looks at like the constructedness of fiction and so many fantasy fairy tale elements. I absolutely loved it. You can hear my thoughts on this. I will link it above and below. Actually, I think I linked it at the beginning of the video, but I, like, I absolutely loved this. It is short. It is sweet. I would 100% read this in isolation over and over in between rereadings of the whole series. The Wind Through the Keyhole is my favorite in the Dark Tower series. Let me know your ranking of the series in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw here today, consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you want to tip me for the work that I do, show some support, some love, that is much appreciated. I have my Patreon link linked down below as well. Thank you so much to my patrons who make these videos possible, who make it possible for me to take the time off to make these videos. I will see you very soon with a look at the paratext of the series. Next week we're going to talk about these books as physical objects and what we can do with that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week with another Dark Tower video. Bye!